team to confirm about this. Okay. So, uh, hi everyone. Let me introduce myself. I am Lavisha Basantani. I am the head HR at uh, DIY Guru. I take care of all the trainings and placements at the uh, at this institute, and we are into the EV and e mobility training institute, as you all know about DIY Guru. And uh, today's session is about the future is electric, exploring careers in electric vehicle technology. This is the topic for the day. And um, we'll be starting the session within five minutes. Thanks for joining. And if you have any uh, questions, if you want to interact something, if you want to have any clarifications to your doubts, you can ask in the Q&A session. That is for last 15 minutes. And apart from this, if you want to ask from me anything, you can just chat uh, drop into the chat box. Uh, yes, David. Uh, I'm sorry. I wanted just to put an emoji. I, I okay. raised it's my okay. hand instead. I'm sorry. Uh, no issues. I mean, please tell me that uh, if this is the same uh, what we were asked uh, to join the webinar on retrofitting of four wheelers. Sorry? Uh, is it is this session regarding the retrofitting of four wheelers? Is it, yes, uh, yes. This is the it webinar? is. It okay. is, yeah. Fine. So our speaker will be joining soon, and I just by 7.35 will be joining the session. Till then, can I please know from where are you guys joining today? You can drop your city, your country, your state, anything in the chat box so that I can know I am from Delhi. Delhi is the headquarters of uh, DIY Guru. And um, you can... Hello, Delhi. Hello, ma'am. Are you the same person we met in noon? I was checking the session. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Hi, nice to see you here. December, Bangalore, Pune, Bihar, Algeria, Chennai, Indore. Oh, my hometown is Indore. I'm from Indore, basically. Andhra Pradesh, Varanasi, Delhi, oh, Hyderabad. Okay, we have students from Pan India. Yes. Very nice. Bhopal, Andhra Pradesh, Jodhpur, Uttarakhand. Okay. Nigeria. Very nice. I'm Nagpur. Oh, there are so many chats I can't read even. Indore, where? Okay, I uh, live in Indore near to Silicon City um, at AB Road. And I'm working here oh. in Delhi. Aurangabad, okay. Solapur, Nepal. Ma'am, you're from Indore or Pitampur? Indore, Indore, proper Indore. AB Road, the way oh. that goes towards Rao. Siva, yes, please yes. tell me. Mami, can you tell me about the procedure of placement? Procedure of placement. Okay, so the procedure of placement that we have here at the Ave Guru is. Uh, we bring down the opportunities for our students that is screened down by us. We either visit to the company or we'll discuss with the HR. And once it's done, we post the job description <laughs> on our uh, LMS portal. That is courses.diagroup.org. And from there, you can access to the jobs, whatsoever you are interested in. You can just apply to it. We'll be screening your resume. If your resume is uh, having any uh shortcomings like uh it's not good in format or we need to change the photograph or like in or anything i'll be reverting back to the mail itself and uh, <clears throat> then uh we'll be uh sharing your resume to the recruiter they will be continuing ahead with your um with your uh <clears throat> interviews and all okay so if anyone is there from diy guru team do we have the speaker with us can i transfer the call to him
Pradeep, Dinesh, you have a lot of questions. Okay, one by one, you can unmute yourself and you can ask. And if there is something like QA, so you can wait uh, for the end uh, for ending this session. So, what are the opportunities for the placement for working professionals? For working professionals, we also do have opportunities. The ratio you might consider between 60 to 40, 60 percent is for place, uh, 60 percent is for freshers, and 40 percent is for experienced. And we do consider the opportunities which will be considering your uh, past automobile experience or your past uh, mechanical experience into this. Okay, so I guess Mr. Javad is here with us. Hi, hello, Visha. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Uh, good well, evening. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, great. So, uh, students, we have Mr. Javad with us. He'll be continuing up with your session. So, I guess uh, I can hand over this call to you now. Uh, sure. Thank you so much, Lavisha, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, so, uh, uh, we, we will start uh, the session today. Before that, I think, uh, is there more people who are joining? Or uh, is it... uh, We can start. We have 20-plus participants. You may start. OK, so uh, uh, before I start. Lavisha, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, recording video will be available after the completion uh, of session. Recording is done, but is, is it shareable or not? That my team will discuss and will let you know. Till then, at least, I guess we should start with the live session because he is here for a limited time. So I guess we should uh, utilize it first. And then we can discuss everything into the Q&A. That would be in last 15 minutes. Yes, please. Sorry for the interruption, Mr. Zibaz. Uh, Dinesh, no worry. Uh, you can connect me on uh, LinkedIn. I can. Uh, you know, if there is any question, I can uh, answer you. So uh, we start with the session today, and uh, I will share my screen. But before that, I think all the people who have joined today's session, it is more regarding the you know retrofitting and uh, uh, about the EVs. And I think you all have the knowledge of EV basically, because if somebody is not with that, uh, then it will be a little difficult for them to understand what exactly this uh, 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 this industry is. So I will share my screen and uh, hope you will get a good knowledge and good uh, uh, clear, I can say, the tech, what exactly it is. Uh, sure, uh, Rafiq, I will uh, tell I, I will tell all the things. Uh, I will let me share my screen. I can tell you what exactly today's session will be about. So, Lavisha, is it visible and my audio is audible, like everybody can hear? Yes, you are perfectly yes. audible and your screen is also visible. Okay, if somebody lost me, please let me know. Maybe there is network issue. So, is it visible? So, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, so, today's topic uh, is about the retrofitting of the four wheelers. And uh, if I tell you about what exactly it is, uh, I have to just go with the very basics. What does a basically EV mean? Uh, so uh, everybody is comfortable English or Hindi. So I will go with both to get things more clear. Uh, so, yeah, both. Sir, please, so, please, sir, both prefer both. mixed language. Oh, sure, sure, definitely. Main dono, dono ke we can mix the that. language because we do have national plus international students, so yeah, everyone yeah. would be able yeah. to understand. Yes, yes, that's why I, I just saw. Yeah, yeah. English would be uh, okay for everyone. Yes, yes. Uh, so the today's session we will the content uh, the table for content for us today is that what the uh, what does the e basically means what is the retrofitting retrofitting how how it is you know uh, coming to the market how it come into the industry we can go with the overview of the IC engine to the electric because retrofitting is more about the existing vehicle to converting it to electric so that is one thing we will go with the technical aspects because technical aspect means the how things has to go with the 
you know the motor controller everything how it has to be go with the uh, the numerically the theoretically with the quicker because we have the big challenge that is to convert a old petrol diesel even cng car to electric we'll go with the battery system and this is the most challenging thing in the whole ev either it's a new it's a retrofitted it's a bike two wheeler this is the most challenging part and is the most expensive part in the in the whole ev then we'll go with the performance and efficiency how it perform how how the efficiency go because you know the vehicle which we have to make it is more about the performance because hame gaadi banana uh, you know it is not something which we can do it because if you if you go with the uh, you just go, you just open the youtube and search there the how to make a petrol car to electric we get a lot of you know content about this thing but that we call a jugaad so we have to go with the all the things how technically all these things work how the science how the logics work with this so we will uh, we will go with this uh, whole system and then the safety and regulatory consideration and this is the i can see the most crucial part because nobody talk about this because the uh, what we call it ki uh, battery motor controller jodna usse usse gaadi electric hogi that is not something which we can talk about because the safety and regulatory is the more important thing right now environmental impact definitely uh, we are talking about the ev it is having a good environmental impact we will just go a little more deeper in this cost analysis because if we want to oh, you know uh, go with this business this uh, industry as a big you know scalable industry in the future or even currently so what the cost analysis is and then we'll go with the case study that is our own uh, the tadpo like how we work on a one product and that that i can say after that a question and answer so i think whole the table of content is clear but before i start with this uh, introduction and all the other topics you have been you know go with the about the ev content what exactly it is so uh if i start with this thing uh, why we convert the ic engine vehicles to electric this is the more important question currently and uh, if i talk about what exactly it means is that you know every every time we talk about the people or we, we talk about the people who are talking who are you know generally the media and everything we are talking about the evs uh, tata has made new ev tesla has made new even honda has made new ev but we know we never talk about the old vehicles because uh, you know if a person if 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 a person is owning a petrol car if a person is owning a diesel car what about that one we are not talking about we are talking about the new industry we are talking about the new tech which is coming to market but we are not talking about the uh, those market those vehicles which are already in the market delhi ke andar ki agar baat kare 1 crore se zyada gaadiyan hai to un 1 crore gaadiyon ki hum baat hi nahi karte hain that is the one point and the other thing is the importance of reducing carbon emission because you know the vehicle which is currently inside the city अभी कोरोना में हुआ क्या था कि आ, सारे गाड़ियां जब बंद हो गई थी तो हमने दिल्ली और बहुत सारी सिटीज के अंदर हमने पीपल स्टार्ट मेकिंग यू नो पिक्चर्स एंड दे स्टार्ट अपलोडिंग ऑन इंस्टाग्राम एंड ट्विटर दैट वी देयर इज दिस इज द क्लियर स्काई यमुना साफ हो गई सो कार्बन इमिशन इज द इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट बिकॉज इट प्लेज अ वेरी बिग मो बिग रोल विच विल गो इन टू द नेक्स्ट लाइट एंड देयर वी कैन सी हाउ इट इम्पैक्ट सो बात करते हैं कि आईसी इंजन व्हीकल को पेट्रोल इलेक्ट्रिक में करने की सबसे बड़ी जो कम्युनिकेटिव इंग्लिश सर व्हाई यू आर ओके 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 नो 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 इंडिया ओके ओके नो इशूज नो इशूज सो वी वी विल जस्ट स्टार्ट विद दैट व्हाई कन्वर्ट व्हाई वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट द आईसी इंजन व्हीकल्स टू इलेक्ट्रिक पावर व्हाई व्हाई देयर इज अ नीड बिकॉज़ एवरीथिंग व्हिच इज इन द मार्केट इट कम्स विद द नीड because if we are making you know currently right now a new device new technology that is that it comes with a need and it comes with always a problem so yes it reduces environmental impact because if we talk about any vehicle let's take a example of swift desire it is emitting 3.6 gram of carbon per kilometer so we, we whenever we drive 1 kilometer of any any petrol car with a 1200 cc engine it emits 3.6 gram of carbon that is one part and the other part is not only the carbon dioxide which which is in the environment there are the nitrogen oxide and nox and the other particle matters which are currently you know uh, in the in the whole city if i talk about especially delhi where this is the most 
uh, most I can say the uh, viral city in our, if whenever the Diwali comes, so we see a lot of news about this city and the energy efficiency because if we compare it the other part is the energy efficiency if we compare it with the petrol uh, petrol to the electric we see a big difference because it is a very logical and it is very you know uh, i can say you have all the people have uh, experienced this thing that electric cars electric vehicles either it's a two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler they have much power and much better efficiency than the fossil cars and the other is the cost saving. And yes, it is it is very clear that if we drive a electric car, if we drive a any any other you know vehicle, we make you know we save a lot of money because running of the cost uh, cost running for a one vehicle for an EV is one rupee even less than one rupee per kilometer. So that is the big difference if we talk about uh, with the you know conversion of IC engines to electric. Then another point which we have is that the quiet and smooth operation. Because the vehicle which is in the petrol, diesel, they are making a lot of noise. When we convert it to electric, they are very smooth and they are quiet. Basically, whenever I talk about the EV and whenever I talk about the retrofitment, these two are the same. You have to always remember this thing. Retrofitting doesn't mean, you know, it is some new tech. These both are same. Only the difference is the chassis. In the new EV, you have the chassis there. In the retrofitment, you have the chassis, you know, already there in the new EV, you have to make only difference in the in this technical term i can say energy efficiency is definitely there because it, it is the you know the electric motor are more efficient than the combustion engines and the significant amount of energy significant amount amount of uh, you know production of uh, electricity compared with the burning of uh, fossil fuels is more so we can have a better efficiency energy in terms of the uh in the terms of reduction in the terms of the power propulsion and the energy independence and security because electric vehicles can provide power with a variety of energy source because you know if i talk about the ic power car there are three options petrol diesel and cng even you know some lpgs and uh, other gas gas we, we can have but in the uh, electric motor if i talk about our evs we have a lot of options yes the source is electric power but it can we can get it from the solar we can get it from the wind we can get it from the hydro we can get it from the coal we can get it from the nuclear so these are the different kind of independence because we are not dependent on one kind of fuel and the technological innovations because in the ev we have a lot of tech if you talk about the from the past 10 years we have seen a lot of difference in the ev especially in the tech part we started with the single gear we have the four wheel drive we have the crab walk kind of vehicles we have the we have the lot of tech we started with the if i talk about in india market we started with the 48 volt in 2013 reva came with the uh, with the with few evs which are e20 uh, mahindra reva uh, sorry reva then mahindra bought it in back 2014 i guess so they came up with 48 volt of system so we have a lot of technological innovations. So these all things which I'm talking about, it is basically why there is need. Because anything in the market, it comes with a need. Without need, without a problem, which we have to solve, these things never get you know mature and the things never get a big opportunity. Because for the past two, three hundred years, we are burning fuel every day. We have made our planet a very you know it is not better for living for humans so now we we talk about the greener energy we talk about a lot of you know carbon credits we talk about emission reduction of the carbon gases carbon emissions so then it is something which we have done it in the past we are looking for something currently and these are the solution which make our uh, whole ecosystem better so this is some introduction why there is need for this and how we have to solve the problem now we come up with the ic engine our view to electric conversion so basically how it how ic engine involved what are the components inside the uh, retrofitted vehicle and how we can con con convert it to to the to ic engine to electric and also we will uh, see what are the benefits of electric vehicles compared to the traditional as i said in the past slide so we will just go through these slides and we can know how it works 
So now I have to make a electric car. Let's take an example. We have to work on uh, Honda City or any any other vehicle. So first of all, what we do? I don't have to open a YouTube and I don't have to go for how to make a, a Honda City petrol car to electric. No, that is a you know jugad. I can say they, that is that is a total jugad solution. That is a jugad approach. We don't have to go with that. We have to go with the proper approach. So first of all, we will do the assessment and the planning. First of all, we go with the what kind of the specific model we are looking for, how it is feasible. And the live uh, uh, example I can see currently is that we we go with this phase where we were converted the Mercedes C-Class to electric. And that is you know something very challenging because there is no petrol, you know, there is no space for the batteries. And it is very challenging because it's an all sporty vehicle. So that is something the feasibility, the assessment, we have to go with the which kind of specific vehicle model we have to go with, we have to start with. And the other thing, how we work is that the factors, the age, the conditioning, the weight and space availability for the batteries and electric component. These are the approaches basically Tadpole works. This is how Tadpole starts the things and how it go with the proper model and how it works. So when we go with this basic, like the what kind of vehicle we have to convert and uh, what kind of, you know, what is the vehicle age? What is the condition? Is it trusted? Is it, you know, the drive train, the tires, everything is okay. It is it smooth or not. And is there a space for batteries? That's the most important thing because we have a big challenge here is that we are working on the retrofitment and in the retrofitment, there is no space you know, easily you will get for the batteries. If you are making a new EV, new car, there you can design the space as per your, you know, battery size. But here you have to make the design something which we can develop, which we can integrate inside the vehicle. And after that, we have to determine the goals, exactly what we have to do, what we have to make from this. Because we are not talking about a college project. We are not talking about some kind of, you know, video which we can upload in the social media. We are talking about a proper business and, uh, you know, going to the component selection, I will just go with my, uh, what, 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 uh, what I do, what basically Tadpole do. So I started Tadpole projects in 2020, 2020 and till now we, uh, in, in, we started with a vintage retrofitment. So we converted the first vintage car to electric, uh, in IIT Delhi. And after that, till now we have converted 15 vintage car across the country and also recently we have worked for the indian army and delivered the gypsies to them and this is the something first time in indian army the one startup has given this kind of solution we also give our solutions to national parks and also we had a big collaboration currently with the fleet operators and uh, we were also a technical partner with the action construction to develop 30 ton of electric crane we are not the first one in this market, but yes, I can say we are the first one who started the uh, new industry, new you know approach with the good results. And uh, we have the challenges every day. And this is I'm just talking in this session. I'm talking about how uh, I think how Tadpole work and how we take this thing uh, you know work on a on a model and how we take things very uh i can see the clear manner in a in a particular steps to make it a sustainable viable and scalable business so coming back to the component selection so co uh, uh, component selection after that when you have the assessment and planning which kind of vehicle we have to go with and then it comes to the component selection and there is the main important thing you have to select an appropriate electric motor which means there are a lot of options in the market if I talk about the motors, if, you, if a person, you know, many people know about the motors, but for the other people, I can I can just give a very small brief about the motors. A motor is basically which converts the electric power to mechanical. And there are a lot of options in the market. Usually for the electric vehicles, we go with the induction, we go with the BRDC, we go with the PMSM, and currently the SRM is in the market. So these are the latest tech which I'm talking about. Although it is a very vast project and uh, you can read it on you know, Google and you can have a better knowledge from that. So once the assessment and planning is done, we go with the motor. What kind of motor we have to use? What kind of size? What is the 
desired performance characteristics. So if I have to work on the Honda City, so first of all, from my mind, I have to make this Honda City either better than the petrol Honda City, or I have to make it a similar to the electric Honda City. So first of all, that thing has to be very clear and sorted. It is not something which we are making Honda City to a e-rickshaw. So that, that thing is very clear. And after that, the second thing is the what kind of range I have to go with. If I go currently in the market, if I compare my vehicle, you know, with the for like a Honda City, if you have to make it electric, we will go with what kind of the nearest electric vehicle which come into the into this radar of sedan. So Tigor is there. Uh, we can have when e, uh, Mahindra Verito is there, e so there we can have a range of 130-160 kilometer let in between we can have the range. And the same we have to go with because you know if we can't give the better, but if we have give the same similar range which is currently available in the market, because the customer acceptance is as per that. So we'll choose a sustainable battery pack which provides a sustainable energy capacity and the voltage and the range definitely. And here is one more twist. When we talk about the you know battery and we talk about the motor, so motor we have the PMSM induction the SRM, BLDC. In the battery pack, we have a lot of choices. Like definitely we will go with the lithium uh, pack, lithium battery, but in the lithium, there are LFP, NMC, you know, uh, there is one more chemistry, uh, LTO, uh, graphene, this is another chemistry. Uh, uh, it is not from the uh, lithium, but in the lithium, there are these chemistries which we have, we, there, the options are. So we have to go with that. And voltage, why there is the voltage I have written here, the voltage plays a specific role because, you know, if you go with the, uh, let's take example of Tata Tigor, we have the 72 volt system there. If you take an example of the new Tata Tigor, which is in the market, even a Tiago, there the voltage is 384 volt. Now the question arises: the same vehicle with the different voltages, how, how, what does this mean? It is very basic, like I, you, you go with the, you know, the losses is in electrical terms, we talk it is equal to loss is equal to I square R, I R square, sorry. So basically it is the, the more current come from the flow from the wire, the more it get heated. So voltage play a very big important role here. What kind of voltage we have to choose? So we, let's we choose with the 72 volts. Then we have to go with the components. What kind of controller we have to go with? What kind of charging system we have to go with? So our approach here, when we have to go with the component selection, we have to very clear that we have to work same what our OEM thinks. We have to make a vehicle which is already in the market, similar to that. Below that, there is no sense to making a vehicle because customer perception is, you know, something he he you will get you will deliver him a brand new vehicle with that performance. So be, below that, there is no sense to make a car electric as a commercially. Then we talk about the integration and installation. So the integration installation is a very, you know, important thing. And it is something which, which where you are designing skills. And, and to be very honest with you, whatever I'm talking here about the assessment, about the component designing, it is not a one person game. It needs a different domain of people who can work on the different parts, who can, uh, you know, uh, work on the different things, but yes, you can have the access and the knowledge of all the things, how it works basically. So the integration installation is basically how you can integrate motor with the gearbox. You have to either you have to run your motor, your vehicle on the same gearbox, either you have to make a new gearbox and either you have to make the direct shaft. So in our case, in the tadpole case, we run the vehicle currently on the manual gear. And the reason for that is that for the gypsies, which we deliver to the you know national parks and Indian army, there the need is that they want a 404 transmission there. So for that, we use that gearbox. We integrate that gearbox in sim that in the in the very similar way how engine behaves. The our motor mimics that thing. So I can't share the pictures here because it is for the patent. So for that reason, I have not uh, added the designing uh, design here. But uh, you can. Uh, 
um, i can show give you the idea in the upcoming slides and about other things that uh, chases part that how we have to modify the chases because it's a packed chases where we have to cut where we have to put a drive train where we have to put the batteries that is an important you know very challenging part because let's take example that if we have to install a 23 kilowatt of battery which means 72 volt 300 dh so where we can place that battery either we have to space there no there is no space so how we can install there the designing come you have to go with the designing part how where we have to place that thing you have to go with the 3d we have to turn the 3d of the vehicle then in the solid works and the uh, in the basic software is the solid works where we can just go where we have to exactly place the designing is done by us because in the market there is no batteries for the four wheeler which you can get easily so you have to go with a good battery player and you have to design by yourself then it comes with the wiring and the control system and this is something where every people you know you know they just i can say miss this part it is something kind of an english paper in the board exam where people think we can get you know pass very we will pass it very easily but no wiring and control system plays also an important role because if the wiring is not proper if the wiring is not as per the capacity it will get it will melt easily there is a full you know i can say 99% chance for a shock and i am the victim of that shock because there is one wire from the contractor to the controller there we use the 16 mm wire and logically we have to use the 70 mm wire there so that wire melt and we i get the shock when i open that box so that is something why i'm talking about the harness because in harness is something when a motor is at the full peak full peak power when you are just drawing the full peak from that there the motor behaves double of its capacity and the current is very the flowing of current is at the very high rate and you need that thing the wiring is definitely as for the calculations what you have to go with and it is not only for the motor it is for the battery pack and the other subsystems because it controls and ensure the functionality of the performance we are talking about the ev and the wiring is the backbone and then it comes the most important thing which i mentioned earlier that is safety and compliance if you have to make a now with the question arrives here that okay there are a lot of player in the market who talk about evs we make the electric car in the youtube you see the lot of player they said okay convert your car to electric this is the battery this is motor i have done this but you know when you make your vehicle to electric and you just you know take it for a drive your vehicle will get seized very easily the reason is it has not done the compliances any vehicle any any kind of car vehicle anything four wheeler two wheeler if it is in the indian market also in the other market european market uk market they have to go with the safety and the compliances which means they have to go for the homologation the certificate part which in india it has been done from ari and icat and then there are a lot of other you know agencies also which take a lot of money so the vehicle you are making it has to go it has to be as per as 123 you have to you know follow all the iso standards you have to follow all the test you make your vehicle you give it for the icat ari here you have to give the 20 lakh rupees of fees per model and then you will get a certificate that this vehicle has been certified under the icat and ari and then you can register your vehicle under the rto here most of the people fail because we make the car electric you know for the ic engine there are 30000 parts and for a electric engine you know electric power car there are only 10 15 parts so anybody can make you know for the even engine there are you know 500 crore 1000 crore of investment to make a one engine and for the motor there is no you know you can get it from any big player or any good player so making car electric car it looks very easy but in it comes to the safety and the compliance part here everybody fail because you have done the jugad from the starting and here jugad don't work here you are engineering your calculations your performance you are you want a single switch you have used that works 
And when you go, when you done the compliance part, then it comes the performance testing. And now it comes the another big part. That is, you know, in Hindi we call it dood ka dood, pani ka pani. Because customer is a judge. You have spent a lot of money. You have spent a lot of, you know, time. You have choose one model. You come with that part. But then customer is going to use that part. Like you have to sell that car. You have to sell, you know, you have to make your customer car to electric. And then the customer is your king. He decides, is this vehicle worthy or not? If the performance is not good, if the testing optimization is good, now, it's a failed product, although you have done the compliance or not. So from the starting part, from here, assessment and planning, this is, I can say, 80% of your work. Because without that, this whole, all these steps are, you know, doesn't make any sense. And when you do this performance and testing, then it comes another part, which is the documentation and certification. And this is something which go with the RTO level, because when you go with the also the RTO level and with the customer level, after getting the ICAT and ARI certificate, you have to register your vehicle at the RTO level. From where the state district level, you know, uh, RTO can register your vehicle with the new number plate. And there is another category called XEV for the vehicle which you retrofit in the government with the you know the uh, the gazette which has been released by the government as one one two one two three uh, which is the compliance basically so there in the gazette you will there is very clear measure that the, which the vehicle which you convert you have they have given the new name for it it is called the xev xev why because it was first electric uh, it was first patrol now it comes to electric so it's a xev category so retrofitment basically means the x ev category as per the government rules and once the certification the uh, registration rc is done then you have to go provide with the basic knowledge to the customer how the component specification the log book uh, the book in which the all things are mentioned the wiring harness the component uh, selections the uh, necessary and the certification regularities all the things have been covered in that so when you go with all this thing now customer has taken the vehicle the vehicle is good the performance is good the compliance are done then it comes another important part that is the maintenance and support and you know we are uh, we are in this country where the people are the need the value for money if there is no maintenance support still your product is failed so you have to go with the proper maintenance, proper support. You have to go with the you know tracking of the vehicles through IoT. And recently we have work on our own system. We track the vehicles which are running. We read the pattern. We are working on the few AIs currently in which we can predict the fault. Because you know running of the vehicle is important. And if your support is good, your maintenance is good, then you have made you know all that is not Tesla, but you have made a Toyota. And your goal should be very clear that don't repair until it is not broken. This is basically Toyota, I can say the slang, but they always call it that don't repair until it is not broken. So same thing you have to go with your tag. You have to be very confident what kind of motor I have done. It is as per the logic, it is as per the tag, it is as per the things which I'm talking about. Then it the next part, you know, the in production, it is the next part come about the compatibility assessment. Basically, when we session, I'm talking about the these things very in a more, uh, I can say, deeper way. So here you can see the gypsy which we have converted. It is a very rough diagram here. Uh, it's a very so solid work, 3D. So you can see here that this is the motor here. My, I can, if you can see my cruiser here. So this is the motor which you have coupled with the gearbox, and this is the uh, a fabricated box in which the control every part is there. And here you can see the battery pack is something which we have placed here. And the people who know about the gypsy, the gypsy is on the ladder. It's a ladder kind of chassis in which there is only space here, either here or either in the front. So front part we used because the requirement of the client was to make it 404 as well. So this vehicle is running on the electric gear and it is running on the 404 transmission as well. And the battery we have placed here, it we have designed in that way that the weight of the vehicle should be clear, should be balanced, and the 
height, width, and everything has to be very clear. So in the next slide, I have given about the designing of the battery, which we have done for the Gypsy. So it is mentioned there. So you can just see from this 3D how the things work. It is not something, you know, total jugad you can do. You can click the picture. You have to go with the proper single detailing of the vehicle. When I talk about the vehicle condition is the chassis body, it plays a very important role here also. In this thing, if just if you just take an example that this part, you know, this part, the uh, fender side, the ladder side is not good, then this battery will get damaged very easily because this battery for the gypsy fades 180 kg yeah there is one more thing which i forgot that is the in the as you can only add the weight 25 percent of the vehicle like the unladen weight if it is 1000 kg the government only permits you to increase the 25 percent of the weight of that vehicle so the designing everything has to be clear as per the rules and now if i talk about another part that is the the bearing the tire the chassis because you know making a new ev is easy for me but if i think to work on an old vehicle i think it's the most challenging thing in the world because you don't know about the tires you don't know about the chassis because everything is has driven for lack of kilometer so this is the most challenging industry currently in which we have to go with a good product and good parts here i can give one uh, one of my experience that uh, when we deliver one vehicle to in a uh, you know park there we see that uh, we tested the vehicle here and there and after some time around uh, 15 20 days the vehicle is not running the uh, the person who who was driving the vehicle he said that uh, whenever i am driving the vehicle it gets turn off very easily like it is getting the the battery is getting disconnected whenever i press the pedal so uh, you know the maintenance sport part there it, it came so we were very surprised at how how this thing is coming up we have tested the vehicle then from here we can't say anything because that time we have not developed any iot any telematics from where we can track the data and we went to that place and you know when i drive the vehicle uh Whenever I press the pedal, it start you know taking a little uh, acceleration and it get disconnected. And when I connected our whole system with the you know through CAN, where we can get the data, so everything was it was okay. There is no I can say nothing where I can suspect. We check the whole battery, whole motor, whole controller. We are not getting the how you know fault where it is coming from. And when we, then I, I just go with the very basic. Okay, let's take this vehicle from the starting, you know, how we make. We check the gearbox. We lift the vehicle first. We check the gearbox in the neutral. It is running fine. We check the transmission. It is running fine. Then I talk, uh, then I called my one, you know, one engineer. I told him that, okay, take this to this uh, vehicle on the jack and run its tire for at least 40 minutes so when you start running there we see there is a lag in the tire between you know from uh, for left side and the rpm is not matching the another the uh, tire which is for the right side and here i get the you know i suspect that there is something in the tire so when we open the tire we see the bearing was totally faulted so the bearing was jammed, the tire was jammed, and it is why the motor was disconnecting again and again. Because I have set all the, uh, you know, I have limited the currents, all the peak current, peak power in such a way that whenever there is so much load, the motor will automatically get disconnected. So there you find the, you know, fault in the bearing. So that's why this thing very, uh, you know, is important for us that the vehicle condition the chassis and the drivetrain components. It is very important for us because we're working on an old car, which have been driven for you know lack of kilometer. And the space, it is definitely the battery we have to keep because there is no space. And uh, in the gypsy, we have not you know there is I can say not even a one inch for us where we can increase our battery. So that is the thrush where we have make our batteries bigger in the size and bigger in the capacity so that is the important thing also another thing here 
is the weight distribution and balance. Because if your whole system is at the back, the batteries, you know, at the corner, and uh, from the front side, the components are not that heavier, then there is the hammer effect in the wicker. You can see the hammer effect whenever the, you know, uh, especially in a seesaw like kind of thing, when we uh, drive the wicker, there will be the hammer effect. And it is because of the battery pack. Because I told you the battery pay pack weights around 180 kg. So that is not a joke. So very heavy. And it's the same for that. That capacity is the same for everybody. So that is something which you have to go with the distribution of the weight. Because you have to check my CG, center of gravity is good. My rolling resistance is good. Is it you know making worth to make it electric and with this design or is it you know something a burden i have put it on the body or on the vehicle another is a drive drive train configuration i told you earlier that how you have to connect the motor with the driveway either it's a fun drive it's a rear drive you have to if you want to use their gearbox you have to go with that coupling where we call the flange coupling but you have to design that part. You have to just mimic how motor behaves. It is something I can say the trick which we have, which I, I know. Just replace the motor similar in the similar way as your engine behaves. And another thing is that the layout of your electric motor design everything. How it works, how it will get coupled, the clutch is there. If you want to use the drive uh, for uh, the single gear system in that, you make it a full automatic, you can do that as well. But it, I told you it totally depends on the client and the type of the vehicle you are working on. Now, there is one more thing in that vehicle when we, you know, uh, this the experience I'm sharing is that when we check the tire of the vehicle we find that the bearing is totally damaged but there is one more important thing which i noticed during uh, the uh, the data which we which i was tracking that the temperature of the motor goes above the 100 and the controller temperature goes to 60 degrees celsius which means this vehicle is getting heated that time we have not done any cooling ventilation cooling system in the controller part because we were you know working on a very basic we just think okay it can run but that that in the it was basically a hotter city so the temperature is very hot and then we find that okay what what hap what is happening there is that when we are driving the motor the vehicle in the first 40 km it is running very fine but after that the whole performance efficiency is down because the controller is, you know, making its efficiency down because of the temperature. So temperature plays very important role. So you have to go with the cooling system. We develop our one system. We install the cooling pad there in the controller and the motor. From there, the controller temperature, like especially in Delhi, there was 35 degree, uh, 36 degree outside, and our motor, our whole EV power system temperature was. Uh, 28 degrees Celsius at that time. So that means it works and it gives a better performance to the vehicle. So that is something which we have to work on the cooling and ventilation. Because it's a very important thing. It is not something engine which requires, uh, you know, 600 degrees Celsius of temperature. No, the cooler and more ventilated your EV powertrain system is, the more efficiency and more performance you will get. So that is uh, the learning which we get from the, our ex, you know, from our basically faults, which we done in our past, but that gives us a good, good result. And I'm sharing your, my experience with you so that you can also go with these things as, as sim, in the similar way while designing a vehicle. And uh, the fuse system, connector system, it plays also, you know, I can say very tricky role here because uh, generally when, when we uh, go with any controller or any motor, the uh, connectors are basically from the vendor side from like if you are taking a quick Oscar motor, if you're taking any any motor in the market, which is for the meant for the EV, uh, the, uh, even for the, any control like Curtis, the Zappi, any controller. So the, uh, the con connectors are basically from the vendor side and we never, you know, check them 
and we just use them. But you know, the connector plays also an important role here. It is the same case which I, you know, another experience. There is one vintage car which we have given in the, another city. So there the vehicle is not, you know, getting uh, started. So when I visited that site personally, there I find that the connector is broken. And why it is broken? Because it is not of the automotive grade. So connector and fuse plays very important role here. The wiring, obviously, it plays. But these small, small things, because you know, for that one connector, which cost only five rupees, I have to spend about fifty thousand for my flights. Like you know, spending hotel, flight, two, three days stay. So that was very big for me. So there is another learning which I got from you know the real experience that connectors you have to go with the automotive grade. Either your vendor is providing, but you have to check it. It is worth it or not. And when you are talking about the upgradation modification for the higher voltage, higher current, you need the another you know components. Look, DC direct current, AC alternative current. If I talk about which current, which current you know is the more dangerous, the answer is DC. But if the voltage is high, in the AC you will get a chance, you know, you get free. But for the DC, it will just make your, you know, total. I can say it will it will make a person total melt into a hole, you know, in a carbon state. The DC is very, and in the batteries we are using the DC batteries at the higher voltage. So the component, the protection for that, you have to go with that. And if we, we uh, if if you go with the back. Uh, data we saw a lot of news about the two wheelers four wheeler that the battery are getting shot the fire incidents so there the bms plays a very important role so look uh, in this session i'm not going with the uh, component level how what kind of component we have to use what i'm just going with the real world challenges the integrations and how we had to go with this whole ecosystem so then AIS 5048 was there for the battery. Then it comes with the 156, where you have to make your vehicle battery more yeah. better. You have to take uh, the uh, the uh, the consideration, the cutoff temperature. You have to ensure all the safety check. The AIS which I'm talking currently, just write down all the AIS. You can get these automotive you know standards AIS very easily on Google internet, and from there you can check. For better for your knowledge, and you can see how what kind of changes the government has made. So it's a AS 156 for the batteries currently. And earlier it was 048. You just go with that. And for the retrofitting, it's a AS 123. So these are the AS which you have to follow for your any vehicle. Like AS 123, which part, sir? Part two. So these are the standard which you have to go with because. You know, this this is some kind of a I can say the procedure. Like if you have to make a biryani, so the procedure is you get this kind of rice. This is a jeera. This is ilachi. So you just mix all the things in the starting. You said my biryani will you know I will get the Hyderabadi biryani. So that is not the way you have to go with. So this is the similar way for the automated standards which you have to follow. What kind of wire? What kind of socket? What kind of switches? The battery? The motor? What kind of test I have to go with? The these AIS uh, clearly mention all these parts. So the cost benefit analysis definitely we have to I will talk about this in the next slide also what kind of things we have to go for because you know we are talking about a tech 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 but <laughs> we're not talking about the uh, money because whole science you know you can be a good engineer you can be a good designer but if your product is not hitting the roads if it is not available on the road if people are not liking it then it's a total failure either you make a rocket so let's now take uh, the motor selection part. How we have to go with, uh, you know, what kind of motor? Many people think about what kind of uh, motor we have to choose. Because I told you that there are a lot of options in the market. There are, uh, I can say, the PMSM, PLDC, induction. So in the if you go with the earlier in the starting, we find that induction motor everybody use. Why? The tech is mature. And look, just remember this thing. Always go with the mature thing for your full flight product. If somebody is doing R&D, somebody is saying, I'm making this motor. Even 
tech motor is you know available in the market and he is saying that i am making this motor don't take it either you will have not tested either the person is not available in the market either his service support either his you know uh, product quality and life cycle is good never go for that so in the starting even currently many people go with the induction motor because the performance it is a rugged motor there are no magnets inside and it is something which people want because it is it is a mature tech basically but then we currently we talk about the pmsm in which the magnets are there and you know the difference between the induction and pmsm if i talk about in the terms of evs for the pmsm why we choose the pmsm first is that it is having a better torque pmsm motors are having a better torque than the induction another is that it is having a better efficiency so efficiency means it is it is 90 to 93% efficient and the induction is 85 88 so in the electrical 1% efficiency makes a big difference and the another part is that the efficiency i talk about the torque i talk about the controllability pms motor we can control very easily for the induction it is difficult and you know the you know twist here is that the controller for the pmsm is cheaper and the controller for the induction is you know costlier if you go with the example if uh, if induction motor like a 15 kilowatt of motor cost 50000 rupees and the 15 kilowatt of pmsm motor cost 80000 rupees and the controller for the induction motor cost 1 lakh rupees and the controller cost for the pmsm cost only 25000 35 40 maximum so this is you know something which is uh, in the price side but yes pmsm is having a better uh talk better efficiency and better we can control that but the only demerit in the pmsm is that it used the magnets in which 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 makes a you know one more i can say a warning here is that when I talk about that, when we visited the place, we find that the control motor temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. When the magnet goes above the 100 degrees Celsius, your motor, your magnet will get demagnetized, which means the power is totally dropped. So for that, we have to go with the cooling part. So I have to make my whole vehicles ventilated. We have to add the cooling so that our temperature efficient range is within uh, that radar where we can control where we can make our shell life better and where we can take a better efficiency and performance from the motor so for the for 100 degrees celsius in the pmsm motor the temperate the motors are the magnets are you know okay but after that it it is something which will the heat will demagnetize a, a magnet and in the induction there are no magnet then there is no worry for that so this is the big difference currently but everybody and even the pmsm is more you know uh, smooth and very uh, you know soundless and uh, this is something which i talk about from my experience and this is something which i talk about in the technical term and now let's take an example if we have to go with the honda city so honda city for that i have to go with the first weight what is the weight Okay, it is the thousand kg. I'm just taking an example. It's a thousand kg unladen weight, which means there is no, there are no people inside the vehicle. So that is unladen. And GVW means gross vehicle weight, in which we kept the five percent and we just calculate the weight. But basically, it is given by the company by by their side. So we have to first go with when we talk about the motor, how to choose a motor. We have to go with the basically the factor weight, then the desired acceleration. Because I told you that, okay, I want the acceleration of the, like I started my career from a college project where I made a first electric car. It was a, you know, where I kept the electric rickshaw motor in 2000, back in 2019. But believe me, the acceleration was too bad. Like it was just, you know, slowly, slowly to start running, but the top speed goes to 60 km per hour, but acceleration was not good. So the desired acceleration. And the good part about the EVs are that the acceleration is better than the IC. So you have seen a uh, you have seen a lot of videos where the you know Tesla truck is beating the Porsche, and you know a lot of 
uh, better EVs uh, are coming with the better acceleration. So the acceleration in the EVs are really good, uh, rather than the uh, the petrol uh, diesel car. So you have to go with the desired acceleration. So zero to hundred or zero to sixty, basically we talk about. I need it in eight second. So that you have in your mind. Then where my vehicle will use? Okay, it is driving. We have to like this vehicle will go in city. This will go in highway. This will go at uh, you know Ladakh. But this doesn't make a sense because if you are making electric, you know, vehicle. If you are making a vehicle in India, then you have to make in such a way that if person is using it in Kanyakumari, if a person is in Andhra, he is using it in Ladakh. It has to be compatible with the, all the states, all the region, and all the tariffs. So that is something you have to clear with your mind. Then we have to calculate the horsepower. There is one case study in the next slides where I have given the formula which I used to how to calculate the motor battery. I'm just giving the literature part here, and we can uh, have a look on the calculation part there. Then the torque characterization. So if I talk about the Honda Seat or Swift Desire, so the torque is that if you just go with the you know search in the Google that what are the uh, specifications of the Swift. If I'm talking about Swift or Honda City, so there you find in the spec sheet the torque, maximum torque, 110 newton meter at the rate 2000 rpm. Here, EV play a very important role. We, if we are using a 15 kilowatt of motor with a 110 kilowatt of torque, but the acceleration is not at the 2000 rpm. Here, the EV win because we can get that torque in the starting rpm. And that's why we have the acceleration really good and we have a very good torque. We have good power starting for the PMSM. Yes, induction is also there, but PMSM wins here. So that is kind of thing, the total horsepower, the total kilowatt, because we are talking about EVs more, we talk about the kilowatts rather than the horsepower. The desired performance, which you talk about. Then we talk about the torque characteristics, what kind of torque we are looking for. First of all, you know, we have to remember we are retrofitting an EV which means we have to make this vehicle better than the petrol car. Uh, we are retrofitting a petrol car, sorry. We are retrofitting a petrol car or diesel car. I have an IC car to EV. So the vehicle was in the, uh, you know, if it is in the petrol, we have to make it in electric with a better power. Like the Swift or the Honda City, we have to make it better than the Honda City in the performance range. So that is clear. The torque characteristic, the factors, the towing capacity, all we have to calculate in the starting. And yes, there is one more point. You know, uh, I will just ask this point at the end because I want to know from you in the question answer round. So basically, you know, you know about this part or not. So then the form factors. The form factor basically the engine. You know, the vehicle is designed as per the engine where it, we have to place the engine where we have to place the petrol tank. It is designed basically in that. Now you know, we are putting a soul into that body like it is basically a transplant of heart kidney liver in a old body so we have to just go with that considering those factors okay this is the engine compartment we have taken it outside here we can use a motor what are the space we have to go with and we have to work on the standardization it is not something which we can work on every vehicle standardize the things if you go want to go with the scalable then the motor form factor, the dimensions, land bread. Okay, this is space. This is where the ventilation coming. There are a lot of challenges you have if you go with the designing part. Because, you know, placing the motor, everything, you know, if you have to go it for a short run, it is, you can do anything. But if you have to make it as an OEM, think of if you are thinking like, a, you know, Mercedes, you are thinking like a Hyundai, you are thinking like a Tesla, you have to consider all the factors. Then you have to uh, choose a motor with a good talk, with who, which can handle the flange coupling, the gearbox, you have to consider all the things. What talk it is, it this uh, the ANSYS, in this ANSYS you have to do the load part, how much of load it can bear, what is the you know gear ratio I have to go with. So that is something which is a very vast subject. And I'm currently pursuing my master's research from IIT Delhi in this subject also, like in this particular subject, because this is a very big subject. This is something which I can say in, uh, in this webinar. But this is something, uh, you know, uh, the highlight kind of thing which I, I can talk about. So you have to go with the all characteristics. 
then when we talk about a motor type i told you the motor uh, by induction by pmsm but there is also the uh, i can say the efficiency part because when we are talking about the induction pmsm and srm then we have to go with the efficiency because our motor should be not like in that manner that okay this is consuming a 200 ampere of current in you know when we are accelerating it so that doesn't make a sense so we have to consider that part also although it is good it is powerful but it has to consume less you know energy it should be kind of a splendor where we have to just keep the petrol one liter and it has to go for 70 kilometers so that thing you have to also consider how what kind of motor like it's a very simple thing uh, we have to give the money we have like it is something kind of thing i can say uh, value for the money but here we can say it's a value for the tech uh, value for the technology i can say the technology which you are adding it has to make the value there because a good efficiency good range good power density it has to make the whole performance good like uh, if you are using 20 kilowatt of pack uh, 23 kilowatt of pack it has to run for 130 kilometer but it is running only for 80 kilometer which means your acceleration is really good but which means it is not you know uh, touching the thresh it is not something which is in the market which is coming with the which is in the market available although you have made your vehicle very fast so the uh, vehicle usage and the vehicle where it has to go in the indian cities it has to be very clear so the efficiency and the consumption you have to consider the motor has to be powerful but it has not to consume a lot of current so that kind of thing you have to go with now the most expensive part is the battery system and 80 percent of the cost is your battery in our vehicle i can say if we are selling our vehicle at you know 10 lakh rupees 7 lakh rupees is only for the batteries and batteries are a very important thing so when we talk about the motor okay uh, 15 kilowatt of motor, 20 kilowatt of motor we are using. This is the power efficiency. This is the torque. Okay, this is really good power. Now you have to look okay, here. You have set the engine, but now the question comes what kind of fuel you have to provide? Because fuel is the something like you have a V8 engine, V6 engine, but you are <laughs> you are putting a kerosene in that, it will never run, you know start. And if it is a petrol car, you are giving a diesel, uh, you know, uh, fuel, it will never get started. So the fuel, fuel is something which is a crucial part in the EV, because what kind of battery you are using? If you are using, let's say, uh, in the Reva, basically in 2013, I, we are having few Revas in our yard. So I see there, the people, uh, that company use uh, lead acid batteries. But if you are using a lead acid battery, though, how you can get a you know three C two C discharge there? So that thing you have to clear with that. What kind of fuel you are using? And yes, in the market there are only you know currently the fuel here there is the lithium ion. But in the lithium ion there are a lot of chemistries. So for Tesla, for any company, good company, they are going with the LFP. And same we are using also the LFP, lithium iron phosphate. So. In the battery also, it is very big subject because battery is something which you have to study from a chemistry level, but here you are not doing some, you know, a PhD or any masters, you have to go with the market. So I'm just telling you about what the market, how, how we have to go with the market selection. So the, uh, if we, if we then, if you go with the motor, it's at 15 kilowatt. So now the condition for our you know vehicle is that we have to run it this vehicle for 150 kilometers so when we choose the battery there are calculations in the uh, next slide few slide after few slides so we have to go with what kind of you know power we have to use if we are using the lfp or we are using good pms we have done the good designing part here it comes that when i'm pressing my pedal the 15 kilo of motor behaves, you know, goes with the peak and gives me 30 kilowatt of power for a few seconds, which means my battery is able to provide a double of its capacity. If it is a 23 kilowatt of battery, it has to give a 50 kilowatt of power for a few seconds or 30 kilowatt to meet that motor. 
So the fuel is very important, what kind of fuel are you using? And the designing of the battery is a very important, crucial thing. So in our vehicle, when we press the pedal, 15 kilowatt of motor we are using, if you are, when you are pressing the pedal, here, you know, logically it has to, it depends on the load. If there is a train, you know, slope, if there are people are inside, so the load, uh, the load on the battery is basically 10 kilowatt, 12 kilowatt, 18 kilowatt, 3 kilowatt. It, it varies. So on in that way, we get the range. But in the starting, if I'm giving an acceleration, the load goes up to 27 kilowatt, which means the six, 400 ampere of current is drawing from my battery. But my battery is only the 300 ampere. So the lithium here plays a very important role because we can have a, you know, two C rate. The C rate is basically if it is a hundred ampere of current, we can assume we can uh, you know, if it is one C or two C, we can uh, take out a double of its current from its uh, you know the output. So on that part, we we feel if it is a three hundred watt uh, three hundred ampere of current, we can draw off six hundred ampere at a one or two C. So this is something which we have to go with the fuel with the battery, and then we have to calculate the energy consumption. Because if my vehicle is, uh, you know, consuming a lot of current, then there is also no sense because either my motor is not behaving in a same way what it has to behave because, you know, the architecture, you know, the designing part, but it is not behaving, then it is totally, you know, something is missing because either it's from the battery side or either it's from the motor side. And then you have to consider the efficiency losses also because, you know, you have to just it's a uh, it's a logical and it's a very technical thing you have to keep in mind that every battery lithium battery it has a 20 percent of the dod which means if i'm if i say sir this is a 10 kilowatt of battery in actual it is only 8 kilowatt of battery because the 20 percent of the dod is there t20 percent dod it is basically the graph three from 3.2 to 2.5 when we go down, when we degrade, you know, consume, uh, when we discharge the cell, in the 2.7, it drops suddenly, like in that shower. It's, a, it's a basically behavior of the lithium cell, the lithium chemistry, basically. It is not stable at the end point. So we take a 20% DOD always. So whatever you are having, if somebody is saying, sir, this is 3 kilowatt of pack, calculate the 20% DOD there. It is not the same 20% you are getting there. It is the DOD we have to calculate, the deep discharge, basically. So when you uh, calculate the battery capacity, you have to add the safety margin also. Now here's the one question also, uh, you know, one tricky thing also. If if I, if I let's take example, my battery needs, uh, my vehicle needs for a 100 kilometer range, it needs 10 kilowatt of battery. Okay, I calculated, uh, okay, uh, from my mathematical calculation, I, uh, I said, I need 10 kilowatt of motor, but I will never use the 10 kilowatt of battery. Sorry, 10 kilowatt battery. I will never use the 10 kilowatt of battery. Why? I use a 12 kilowatt of battery because I have to take a margin of 20%. Because my calculation says that it is 20, uh, 10 kilowatt, but there is DOD also in the lithium cell, lithium packs. So 20% I'm taking a margin to meet that thing. So in all the battery which you see in the uh, Tigor, Verito, anywhere, if they say 23 kilowatt of battery, always calculate the 20% DOD there. And after that, when you, and then again, AIS 156, the AIS 58, you have to go with, you have to see what are the safety precautions, what are the uh, measures which government has mentioned in the automated standard. We have to follow that. We have to choose a very particular BMS because BMS is the most uh sensitive thing in the battery because if you are choosing a wrong bms your battery will get fired easily you will not get a proper output so the bms is very important the designing of the battery is very important and uh, that is a something which you uh, has to consider in your mind here is the one example like uh, if we if the vehicle consumption is 250 watt hour per miles and the desired range we need is the 200 miles and the efficiency loss is 15 percent and uh, sorry, I forgot one more point here is that uh, when you are calculating 20% DOD, but there is the losses also in your vehicle. 
in the retrofitted vehicle or even the new vehicle the tire losses uh, the rolling resistance the aerodynamic loss you have to consider that part also so if it is 12 uh, 12 kilowatt you have to add a margin of one kilowatt also for that to meet up that all losses so these are the losses you have to calculate so here the total energy consumption uh, is the vehicle energy consumption multiplied desired energy, which is a 50000 watt hour which we have to require for a 200 miles this is a very basic calculation we have to go and uh, if somebody wants to clear, take the uh, you know picture of this you can take because this is a very good formula you can use and uh, then we have to go with the adjusted energy consumption which i mentioned that 50 percent of the efficiency loss we need and here you can see the total energy consumption multiplied by one plus efficiency losses you can get this formula very easily on the google these are not some you know rocket science a very basic thing so then required battery look this is something 57 000, it's a 57 kilowatt battery which we required but i mentioned that we have to uh, keep up the battery you know dod the efficiency also there the efficiency factor and all the things we have to calculate so when we divided the adjusted energy consumption by battery efficiency factor which is 0.85 we will get the desired battery now you can see from 50000 like 50 kilowatt to 67 kilowatt which means we the 17 kilowatt is added so this kind of you know adjustment you have to do it is not something 10 kilowatt you have to use kino no it's not 3 kilowatt no it's like dikhta kuch hai bikhta kuch hai so uh, the better example is that ke na dikhane ke kuch aur khane ke kuch. so we are talking about 10 kilowatt but it is not a 10 kilowatt it is basically 13 kilowatt in which we have calculated the you know dod we have calculated the losses we have calculated the efficiency all of the factory factor we have calculated this is the range we have to you know, battery capacity we have to go with this is our one battery design which we have done for the uh, gypsy so this is we have done by ourselves the battery design here you can see the cells we are using the uh, uh, here the 160 it is the cell dimension like this is cell which you get from the vendor he gives you the cell uh, uh, basically data sheet in which the cell dias everything is here so we are using the prismatic cell in this we are not using nmc uh, tesla is using the cylindrical cell 18650 we are using the prismatic 100 years cell so this is a you know if this length is very you know large it makes a trouble for you in the battery fitment so your whole brain is total stuck with this part how i can design the battery where i can keep the battery and believe me without the experience you can't do this thing because this is something which you get with the experience the battery bms placement the type of connector which you are using the type of wire you are using all these things you have to consider and you can make the battery by your own you can design it and there are a lot of people you know engineers who design the battery then in this pack we are using the 69 cells and 69 cells are connected in you know uh it's connected in series and uh, it's a 25 s and we are having 72 volt 300 h of capacity and it's 223 kilowatt of battery but it is not actually 33 we are only getting 18 kilowatt of power so one more case here and uh, one of my worst experience which cost me 25 lakh rupees of you know i can say a loss when we are using the uh, army project there we there i calculated all the battery calculations okay this is the battery calculation we need this is something 18 kilowatt 16 to 18 kilowatt for client requirement was 120 kilometer with full load and with the full speed so that is a you know achievable range it is a practical range, range with them which i am talking about and in the ar and icad your there your range will be 200 kilometer so even it if it is you are buying any two wheeler three wheeler they always mention uh 200 kilometer range there is star and ari icat they have mentioned so that is the lab report in the actual it is 110 130 so we are i'm talking about the actual range. i'm not talking about any you know uh, claimed or lab range so when i was doing the calculation here then i calculated that, okay we need like 18 kilowatt of power we uh, use the 80 volt 200 h of battery and when we start you know taking a trial on that batteries we get 95 
maximum of 204 kilometers of range. Actually, if you are driving very good, like a very systematic manner, the range was 104, you know, maximum. And I was not getting how it is running. We have done a lot of, you know, test. We 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 wait. We we done, you know, 30 cycles so that cell will get balanced. It will give the backup. But the results are not getting. At the end, I, you know, you know, doing a lot of brainstorming and, you know, rectifying the error why it is not giving us a range what the client were desired range then i rechecked my calculation i found that i have not calculated a 20 percent dod and the efficiency losses i forgot that part and that cost me 25 lakh rupees of penalty because i have already quoted some price to the you know army and then i have to go with a bigger pack so actually it was not 16 18 kilo out of pack it was <laughs> Basically, 15 to you know 14 kilo out of pack, which was in the uh, in the back, which which was actually working. So now the 23 kilo out of pack which we are giving, it is behaving as a 18. So this is very big thing which you have to keep in your mind, because these you know basic basic small small things cost very big for you. So charging infrastructure. So we talk about the motor, we talk about the batteries. Now we talk about the charging, and this is the subject which you you know you know very better the home charger is there the dc charger are there home charger is something which you can get charge your vehicle from home with 220 volt it it goes maximum up to 3 kilowatt because our meter is having only 3 kilowatt of 3.2 kilowatt of capacity so that is the home charger which you have to give we provide the home charger with our vehicles we are taking charge their vehicles easily from their home switch and uh, another is the fast public charger. There you have the charger from 19 kilowatt, 15 kilowatt easily. And uh, you uh, charge your vehicle from the fast charger. And it, you know, fast charging is not recommended even by the OEMs because when you do the fast charging, the cell gets heated. And, you know, heat makes the chemistry of the lithium very, I can say, uh, it, it decreases the life of the cell basically in a short way. So the fast charger is not recommended unless and al until you are in a, you know, for a tour or not in the city. So avoid that. So public fast charger, DC fast charger, there are a lot of protocols which you have to follow. Uh, the CCS, the CCS type two, which are the European Chinese, which is in the market. So these are the few picture of the home charger and the fast chargers, which we provide. And also there is one more formula which you have to go with. Everybody know this thing. It's a very basic formula. Like uh, if a, if my battery is uh, you know 10 kilowatt and a company has given me two kilowatt of charger. So I have to charge it home charger basically. So if somebody say how much time it will take, just divide 10 by two, it's a five which means five hours, it will get full charge. It's a very basic formula. Everybody calculate, you know, it is a better for your information. And the other is that uh, if uh, if I'm getting, you know, uh, if I have to charge my battery from public charger, the charger is five kilowatt. So how much time my, my scooty or my, you know, three wheeler will take, the vehicle will take. So five is a 10 divided by five, it's a two in two hours. My vehicle will get charged. It's a very basic formula. Now the important thing is that cost analysis. You have done a lot of R and D. You have done a lot of brainstorming. You have made the vehicle. If you are in a you know company, if you are in a good company, you have done a lot of you know even either it's your own startup. You have done a lot of things. But the part is that cost analysis. Let's take an example. You have made a vehicle and that cost 15, 20 lakh rupees. Why not buy a Tata Nexon or any new vehicle? Why I have to convert my old vehicle to uh, electric? So that is a big challenge for this industry. Customer is a very price sensitive. He will not spend it because he is having a lot of option in the market what you are costing him. So if for the Gypsy, I'm taking example, like for me, they told me how much Gypsy cost. It cost 8 lakh almost. What are the specs you are giving? We are giving a specs which is similar to the Tata Tigor. So Tata, how much Tata Tigor cost? It cost around 14 lakh rupees. And how much uh, your, your vehicle cost? 
so if let's take example if it cost you know or not example it cost around 7 lakh rupees so okay like it is the half of the price you are giving okay good but now if i have to give this cost analysis to my customer this is the gypsy basic like i have to you know tell him understand him what are the benefits you will get to when you make your car to electric the mileage uh, this is basically for the Maruti Eco. One of my client is asking for that. So I have made for that. It's not for the Gypsy. So for the Maruti Eco, it's 18 kilometer per liter mileage you will get. It is what company says. So cost for running 100 kilometers is 538 rupees. I'm just talking about 100 kilometer. Carbon emission is 2.6 gram per kilometer. So you can just calculate it for uh, 100 kilometer is 2.8 kg. For 1000 kilometer, for 1 lakh kilometer, it will be in a ton. So you are saving carbon. And now there are carbon trading in India. You can sell the carbon credits. You have to register for that. That is some another process. You can also search it on Google and we get a better data. So maintenance cost for 100 kilometer is 30 rupees. It's like a 20 rupees. So fuel consumption, if I talk about 100, 100 kilometer every day for one month, it's a 166 liter. So cost for petrol. For one month, 100 kilometer per day. If I running 100 kilometer per day, and uh, what, how much fuel cost for 166 liter? It is 1 lakh 61,660 rupees. And the carbon emission for one month is 8.4 kg. And similar, if I go with the one year, we are spending. I think there is miss uh, some uh, error in the one month calculation. This is I think 16,000. And uh, for a one year, uh, one year it is one like ninety three thousand. So it's a sixteen thousand basically. This is some error. And carbon emission in one year we have said hundred kg. So this is something you know, person is spending for hundred kilometer every day. Three sixty five days spending one lakh ninety, like, almost two lakh rupees for hundred kilometer every day in Maruti Eco, and he's emitting one hundred kg of carbon. So if he convert it to electric, so if I'm using their you know 12 kilowatt of pack for 100 kilometer or 14 kilowatt so taking 7 rupees unit electricity unit so it cost 126 to 150 carbon emission is zero maintenance cost is five because it is having very less maintenance electric consumption is 540 units per month uh, for 100 kilometer and uh, for uh, the electricity cost there it is spending 16,000 rupees. Here he has to spend only 3,700 rupees. Carbon emission for one month is zero. The electric consumption for one year is 6,480. And just look at this number 1,93,224 for one year, 45,360 for one year. So this is the difference you have to tell the customer. So this is your saving. If you spend a 6 lakh rupees, in your conversion car you can recover your money within two three years and fire eight years of the life is for the battery so this is the big difference you have to go with so now the end part of our today's session is a case study so hit this is ace electric crane where we are the technical partner for this and the challenge for that this is basically it's a f-150 action construction equipment you can see this in the website so it's basically in the petrol version so we got opportunity to with the i have meeting i got opportunity to meet with the uh, the owner of the company who said that we are working on this and we if you can work on this for the consultation or being a technical partner so we start working on this crane so here in this crane it is basically a diesel crane so they said that what you are doing replace it in here but with a big scale so basically this crane is retrofitted but it's a oem product like it is similar way i told you in the uh, in the starting that new vehicle old vehicle you know new ev retrofit ev it's the same only chassis makes a difference so we went to factory we are these cranes we manufacture they manufacture it's in the faridabad palwal so they take, pull out the engine diesel engine they said now you make it electric tell us how we can make and the whole their team and we uh, it was it, it took a one year for us to brainstorm 
The challenge for the screen was the powertrain, battery, load capacity, duty cycle, gradability, compliance, charging cycle. Powertrain, first of all, big issue because it's a 4A4. Second, battery, because it is not something, you know, 10, 20 kilowatt you required. Load capacity is 30 ton. This whole crane is, you know, 15 ton and it lifts 15 ton. The, you know, customer requirement is very clear. 15 ton it will, you know, lift. Total capacity is 30 ton. Duty cycle. What is duty cycle? In the construction vehicles, their mileage is, is not something we require. We count their duty cycle is count. Okay, it 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 counts for 12, 13 hours of duty cycle. Credibility, because it will not, you know, it is not something which which will run on a highway. It has to go with the off-road, which it has to go in a very different train. So credibility there, compliance, because whatever you are making, it has to complies will comply with the government rules and government norms, and then charging cycle. So this is something a very similar way the electricity is explained how it works. So if your wire is less, this is volt, this is ohm. So I can see in this picture you can understand the whole electricity how it works and how what is what does the electricity means. So for this thing, I have to calculate what are the motor. I have to go. I, I mentioned in the earlier slide, we said first of all, assessment we know, then power motor calculation, then battery calculation, then compliance. We go with this calculation. You can see I have it's a handwritten. And sorry for the you know, my handwriting is not that good. So the crane was basically it's a lifting capacity the client requirement is 15 ton operating weight is 15 5 to 5 kg which is 15 ton transmission synchro mesh top speed 40 kilometer gratability is 40 percent unladen so for it is very clear that this is the same petrol it is basically on the diesel engine not petrol uh, they want to replicate of in the electric i told you the best way to make the car electric is there to replicate the petrol diesel car with this electric power with our electric power so best way because the person is driving already that vehicle in the petrol obviously it will get better if you use the electric but first your uh, vision is that to replicate that they want the same gearbox because they said you have to just replace what your architecture here also so we use the first hill climb for this is the mass into gravity into sine theta Mass we are having 15.525, gravity 9.8. Sine theta we get from the gradability. If you convert the 40% gravity into the angle, so you will get the value of 0 0.366. You will get on the Google easily. So this is the force we get. It's a 5.5761.29 Newton. So these are the following which I have basically made. It is something you know which works for me always. And yes, it is a basic formula also. But this is something you know tricky formula. I can say that you know, uh, some kind of, uh, I can say, uh, most uh, quick way to understand this. So the total power is that total force into speed. For the speed, we have to take it in the meter per second. So 40 kilometer was the requirement. You have to divide it with the 5 by 18. It's on the Google as well to convert it to meter per second. It's 11.11. .11. So force was 5.56761 Newton multiplied by speed 11.11. You get the 77 kilowatt of power. This is the power you have to require for your motor, for your crane to run. This is the very simple, easy formula I have developed from where you get the power rating of the vehicle. But for that, all this data has to be very clear. But this, these formula vary because i'm talking about the one case study of my crane here the things are different but you can implement in other also so but what is operating weight sir operating weight is one five five two five it's a 15 ton basically it's a total weight gbw is 30 ton thirty thousand kg what do you mean by operating weight are uh, the lifting weight this this yes. bomb okay fine yes this is the bomb 
which he, it, it has to lift. So 15 ton is the whole vehicle weight and 15 it lifts. So when we uh, calculate all this thing, we get the 77 kilowatt of uh, power rating. It is the desirable rating which we have to go. It is the you know maximum because we have taken 40 kilometer per hour speed. So, but now the things come here that 77 kilowatt of the power you required. No, we don't want to read 77 kilowatt of power. It is the 77 kilowatt of peak power we required. And this is something which we have taken plus because 40 kilometer is not something which a vehicle will continue to run. Because I am taking 15 ton of load with the 40 kilometer of speed it is running, which is not practically possible. It can never run on that. But in the calculation, we take the worst of the worst. As I mentioned, it cost me already 25 lakh rupees in the earlier. So this is 30, uh, this is the 77 kilowatt of power which required. And for that, we this is the peak, and we are having in the India, we uh, with the one company inventor, we develop the actual half of the motor that is 37 kilowatt of motor with the peak power of around 75 kilowatt. And the torque is the same what the what that um, uh, engine is having. Because we are having a spec sheet. So it is so, the uh, hello? Yes. Sir, what do you mean by unladen? Like you have mentioned in the gradability section. Unladen. unladen is, you know, this currently is the unladen weight. Okay. okay. In which there is no load, no driver sitting inside. Okay. Curb weight, in short. Yes, unladen curb weight. Okay. Sir. And gross vehicle weight is that when it is with the full load, it is the driver is inside, right? Okay. So when we get this power rating, it is a half of the power rating which we get. Now we get clear with the power, and definitely it is a PMSO motor because the requirement is very clear. And for this, uh, here we have to go with the voltage, what kind of voltage we have to use. So we use the 384 volt here because you know the motor is big, the power requirement is big. The better the power, the better the voltage, you know, higher the power voltage, lower the current, the I square or losses will be very less which means heating of the wire, heating of the batteries will be not be there. So we go with the high voltage system. To calculate with the battery, what kind of battery we have to use? Because, you know, I am taking, uh, you know, uh, 40 kilometer per hour. I'm uh, Here, what I do, the twist is that I, I calculate this thing as a 100 kilometer. But for this particular thing, it is a duty cycle. But I am taking it as, okay, 100 kilometer, uh, it has to run. So basically for a vehicle we go with that part but uh, it you know synced in the i can say how it synced so for reference lab test it is my formula to go with the one kilowatt we use the one ton so one kilowatt of uh, you know the motor it is we we calculate the one one kilowatt a thousand kg it's a very simple example you can get it from the e-rickshaw so lab reference we have there from there if you go with the e-rickshaw, there are, you know, uh, 750 kilowatt of motor, there is 200 watt of motor and the load, the eight, nine people are sitting there. So almost we take it as a one ton for one kilowatt and the energy consumption in the, you know, uh, the reference, we take a 70 watt hour per kilometer for one ton. So for the one ton with the 40 kilometer speed, it should be almost 70 to 80. It varies, but this is something which you take as a reference and it also depends on the vehicle dynamics and a lot of other factors also. But to ensure with the battery capacity, you know, rough, you know, whatever I'm talking about here in the calculation part, there is always a difference in the practical parts. When you go with the practical, when you make the vehicle, when you do the, all the things, there is always an error of margin. But this gives us a better reference how we have to go with that uh, calculations. So. Um, if if I talking about the weight 15 tons, ton gross weight 30 uh, uh, 30 ton, I have written the 23. Uh, just wait. Uh, it's uh, 30 ton. Uh, it's a 23 ton basically. It's not a 30, I guess. So here I, this, this is, uh, so it's a 15 weight, uh, 15 ton and uh, the lifting capacity is not 15 ton. It's something I think around uh, 11, 11 ton. So that makes 23 ton. So, okay. If you take it to 30 also, so you have to multiply 70 into 30 because I mentioned here that 
we take 70 watt hour per one ton. So it's a basically 70 watt hour you have to multiply with the 23, either we take it 30, but for the 40 kilometer per hour. So we are just taking currently, uh, you know, assuming it is not any kind of crane, we are just consuming, assuming it as a vehicle, electric vehicle. So for that, we are doing calculation. So for a 100 kilometer running at 40 kilometer, we have to just multiply the value which we get it from here to the kilometer. There we get the kilowatt hour of the battery consumption. And taking 20% DOD in that, it is a 193 kilo. Uh, kilowatt, uh, it's not km, it's a kilowatt hour, which required the battery for running this vehicle for three hours with the 40 kilometer speed to 100 kilometer. But that that is not something in the crane because here we need the duty cycle. So what does basically this means? And the battery which we use in this vehicle is the same, is 150 uh, watt hour, kilowatt hour battery which we used. So the calculation, this formula, which I mentioned here, it was almost the same because I have taken a lot of margin of error here. I have taken the 40, you know, 43 kilowatt hour uh, uh, more because there are a lot of things which we, it, it is basically a rough formula which we are using, but there are better, it depends on the type of gear, type of, you know, wheel, wheelbase, a lot of things are inside which, which you have to go with a very, uh, at every single step, you have to calculate that. But these are the some kind of, you know, uh, check your uh, the uh, assumption, the check your uh, motor, what kind of motor you're using. So this is the uh, photo when we start working on it. This is the during the launch. Is the owner of the company. So when it was launched, but there are a lot of challenges in this screen. So uh, uh, in this screen, when we made the screen. Uh, this is the motor was accurate, the power rating was accurate, which we made. The battery was also there. Now, if you know that in this crane, there is 5 ton of weight which is installed here. It is in the form of iron dust and also iron, but here in the, in the petrol one. Here you can see this is the petrol one, uh, sorry, diesel one. I'm again saying here it is engine which we have removed. So in this vehicle, here, the company uses the fire ton of uh, the iron dust and iron, you know, well, the load basically to ensure that when it lifts the 15 ton of weight or 10, sorry, it's not 15, it's a, uh, you know, uh, 10, 11, 10 of weight, it will get balanced. Otherwise, what happened that if it lifts the weight, if there is no weight here, it will get, you know, down from this side. So they always keep the weight here. In this battery, what now we have the issue here that the uh, cost analysis. Now we calculate that, okay, if we are using 150 kilowatt hour of battery in this crane, it costs only 25 to 30 lakh rupees for the battery. So how it can be achievable? Because this crane, which is available in the market with 18, 20 lakh rupees, it costs 40 lakh rupees and there is no sense to buy this motor crane. Then we keep, you know, brainstorm and we come into the, uh, come to conclusion that we will use the lead acid batteries here. We use the excited batteries, which is giving the same power with the but not a normal batteries, lead acid battery with a good grade. So the batteries, you know, for the graphene batteries, what the issue is that they are having very, they are very bulky, they are having very big weight. Lithium is not having that weight. So that weight, you know, blessing in the disguise basically, that weight we use as a counterweight here. So that it provides the power. But it's also provide the counter. Otherwise, we have to use a 30, you know, fire ton of iron to ensure the management of weight balancing of the crane. So that you know, battery gives us the counterweight also and make the price half of the you know from the lithium. So this is the thing which we have. Then this, I don't know what is the cost of this, but that that makes a very big difference in this whole crane and here also we see the challenges such as that uh, the vehicle is not running at uh, 30 kilometer per hour speed like basically 40 i'm talking about Brain. but it is 25 kilometer per hour which is which they permit to the screen and we see that uh, there is heating issue again and again then we work on the compressor side to ensure is all hydraulic system because all the things are running from 
the engine, we couple it with the motor. And you know, most amazing thing, what an innovative thing we develop in the screen is that only a single motor is running the vehicle, running this boom also. So here is the one compressor, which uh, hydraulic or not compressor, hydraulic, which run this crane uh, boom. So one single motor is doing all this thing. So this is the innovation. This is the tech which is developed in the total make in India. And this is how we have to solve the problem. So this was the one case study which we work on. And this is successfully launched by Shiri and Nitin Gadkari ji last year. And uh, this is something product which we are very proud of. And we are we have learned a lot of things from this. We are implementing something bigger in the future also. But from you know oldest vintage car, which we have done in 1916, that we make to electric. And that is running you know very smoothly and fine uh, today also. And the another biggest 30,000, you know, 400 kg was that vehicle weight, and this is a 30,000 kg. We started from that, and we are you know continuously going. But this is something the achievable we have got. So the approach is very clear. You have to just go with the assessment. You have to go with the planning, the power rating, the particular motor, the particular. Uh, the choice of uh, the frame, and you have to just go with logical what we have to exactly client need from us. Otherwise, what happens is that we become the Elon Musk, we become the you know some kind of scientist. We start saying, okay, we can do this, we can do that. No, see what a client need, see how much this vehicle can go up to, see how kind of things we can use. The cost benefits, the cost analysis to the user, and how we can this thing scalable. This is not, and you know, we are having in the retrofitment there is eighteen percent tax for the new EV. There is only five percent tax. Tax. So one challenge is there, and for the retrofitment, people see this industry as a purani gadiya hai. It's a scrap kind of market, but no, it's a seventy billion dollar of market. It's a very big market, but only challenge is that. We are not working very clearly, and but we are we are we are getting results. But yes, if the people come with these solutions with this approach, they can definitely help. So if you want to connect with me, you can just scan the code. It's a LinkedIn code. You can connect with here. And yes, uh, close my screen and come to the question answer round. So uh, scan this if you want to connect. I am closing my screen and coming to the screen. Round. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yes, sir. So can I get your mail ID or number? Like, uh, first time uh, this, like... I, I can't provide you my number, but uh, I can definitely give you a reply on LinkedIn. So if you are having the link yeah. here, you can scan this code. I will get you. Actually, I'm the one you are not able it. to scan it. Just search. The, I will just uh, write in here my name. I can. I will share my email in the chat box. So. I hope this uh, session is very helpful because you know uh, this subject is not something which I can uh, tell you in a you know one hour or two hour. It take it took me around three to four years to just learn. I can say ten percent of about the EVs, but it's a very big subject. It's a very vast subject, and everybody has to you know study by their own. I can just give you the highlights what mm -hmm. this uh, uh, engineering means. And let's sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, I have a question here. Yeah, sure, please. So I can see that uh, there are multiple things involved when you decide something, say a retro retrofit to be done to a vehicle, uh, a two wheeler or a four wheeler. So uh, from a student point of view, so who's planning to do something on a retrofitting, what would you suggest? It's like a more of a basic where I would see this calculation part once you understand the requirement from the customer and you're going to see what is the ROI on, say, converting this retrofit. <laughs> so later that part, there, there are multiple technologies, multiple people involved, like your mechanical, your uh, uh, electrical, mm -hmm. electronics, programming, uh, simulation part. So how exactly are <laughs> you going to handle all these like multiple teams? Uh, there I'm not able to understand 
like if a student would like to get into a retrofit uh, where exactly he can focus uh, look uh, uh, abdullah the thing is that retrofitment is not something which is you know a student for a student it's a basically av it, yes. it is only it is you know i want to work in a car company okay which right. car company you want to work i want to say work on a you know in a hyundai or in a maruti right. It right. is the same. Retrofitment is basically an electric vehicle. You are you are right. not making something you know totally different. It is the same EV, same mm -hmm. only chassis there. So for a mm -hmm. student, if you want to go into the EV industry for a retrofitment, mm -hmm. I will I will suggest you know if you want to make your own startup, I will suggest don't right. do. This is okay. a very this is a very challenging industry. Don't do okay. either. You don't have a lot of money in your pocket, and no right. investor will give you the money. Right. I'm I'm you know. Uh, hi, Jibar. <laughs> yes. Sorry right. for the interruption. I just wanted to let you know that session is really nice. I mean, okay, the, I'm glad to see that uh, even after two hours, the students are so interested and they are taking the interest in your session. So it was okay. just a compliment. I thought that if I'm here, thank because you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not from the technical background, I'm the HR, but still, even I was thinking, what are these things? And even I was enjoying that. So it's a really nice. I yeah, hope thank the you, students thank you. are also enjoying the session. Yeah, I, I hope even all everybody. I'm not good in explaining, but I try my best. No, because, no, it you was know, really, this, this it was really lovely uh, session, and I just came to check, and I was like, "Yo, students are still here, and they are uh, participating even." No, no, definitely. It's, it's, I think it is something which makes everybody more, you know, relatable. Yeah. Uh, coming, coming back to Abdullah to your question, uh, you know, yes. getting back to you know EV in any company, either two wheeler, three wheeler, the architecture mm -hmm. is always same. I will just, you know, right. uh, just give me. Uh, uh, I will share you um, uh, a later uh, if you connect me on uh, the mail. So ba sure, basically, sure. it is it sir, is something sir, you know, yeah, not for the startup. Look, yes, yes. Sir, sir, एक one question. Plus speaking in Hindi, yeah, my English for week. मैं आपसे ये पूछना चाहता हूँ. Oh no no. कि जैसे हम already हाँ मैं दिल्ली मैं दिल्ली से हूँ. Already यहाँ पे काफी electric scooter हैं. जैसे like Ola, Ether. मैं particular two wheeler पे focus करना चाहता हूँ ना कि retro fitting. आने वाले time पे वही scooter को take करना पड़ेगा market में चल रहे हैं जो बड़ी बड़ी company आएंगी वो छोटे छोटे बंदों को खा जाती है. और मैं किसी को बोलूं दस लाख लगा के गाड़ी बना ले तो कोई नहीं बनाएगा रिस्क नहीं लेगा दस लाख का आपको पता है तो मैं ये चाहता हूं कि टू व्हीलर पे हम सर फोकस कर सकते ओला पे जैसे वो कभी खराब होती है हमारे पास आए तो हम ठीक कर पाए उसमें क्या है कि सॉफ्टवेयर है टेक्निकल है उसके बारे में चाहता हूँ सर टू व्हीलर फोकस करना चाहता हूँ आपका नाम क्या है मेरा नाम बलविंदर आपका ड्रीम ईवी लिख के बलविंदर जी देखिए मैं आपको ना एक बड़ी कड़वी बात बताऊंगा अगर मेरी बाइक है मेरा कस्टमर आपके पास क्यों सर्विस के लिए आए मैं उसको पांच साल की वारंटी दे रहा हूं और अगर एक तार भी खुली मैं वारंटी हटा दूंगा आप खेल समझ रहे हैं सर मैं एग्री हूं पर ओला मैं हाँ। समझ गया ओला ओला में क्या कर रहे हैं ऑलरेडी सर सर्विस नहीं मिल पा रही नहीं वही वो, वही मैं कह रहा हूँ देखिए इसमें बलविंदर जी ओला की ओला के केस में क्या होता है कि साइड स्टैंड भी हम एक्स्ट्रा हम लगा देते हैं तो वारंटी एक्स्ट्रा मानते हैं वो मैं एक्जेक्टली exactly, राहुल जी मैं उसी बात पे आ रहा हूँ और बलविंदर जी मैं उसी बात पे आ रहा हूँ की देखिये कड़वी बात यहाँ पे ये यह है की मैं भी अपनी जो गाड़ी हमारी कंपनी की जाती है टाइटपोल की हमारी एक नट पे खुल जाए ना मैं कस्टमर की पांच साल की वारंटी खत्म कर देता हूँ और उससे क्या होता है कि कस्टमर डर जाता है इवन देखिए हमारे घर के अंदर टीवी है ना तो मैं 40 किलोमीटर दूर जाके सर्विस सेंटर के अंदर टीवी को रिपेयर करवाऊंगा नॉर्मल मैकेनिक से नहीं करवाऊंगा तो इस इंडस्ट्री के अंदर दिक्कत सबसे बड़ी क्या है कि सारे व्हीकल जो है वारंटी के अंदर है और इसके अंदर हमें पता नहीं कि इसके अंदर एग्जैक्टली क्या है क्योंकि हर एक का टैक अलग है देखिये आर्किटेक्चर सेम है मोटर पता है इसके अंदर क्या है लेकिन मोटर का कैन उसका पावर उसका सिग्नल लेना वो सेम नहीं और ये कोई भी नहीं बताना चाहता कि हम इसको कैसे बना रहे हैं अब देखिए जो अगर पेट्रोल की बात करें सौ साल पुरानी टेक्नोलॉजी हर एक को पता है कैसे खोलना है लेकिन अगर हम पर्टिकुलर बीएमडब्ल्यू ऐसी गाड़ियों की बात करें आपको बहुत ही कम मैकेनिक मिलेंगे जो उस गाड़ी के ऊपर काम करते हैं तो सेम ईवी इंडस्ट्री भी करंटली है अगर आपको बाइक बनानी है आप कहते हैं कि मैं अगर खुद की बाइक बनाता हूँ दस लाख रुपये कोई इन्वेस्ट करेगा देखिये वरिंदर जी गाड़ी आप बना लेंगे बाइक आप बना लेंगे दस लाख तो बहुत ज्यादा अमाउंट आप पांच लाख में बना देंगे तीन लाख में बना देंगे 
आपको पता होना चाहिए कि एक बाइक को अगर आपको आईकेट या एयर आई कराना है तो उसकी फीस दो करोड़ रुपए है उसको पास कराने की और इन्वेस्टर से दो करोड़ रुपए लेके पास कराना कोई इन्वेस्टर आपको दो करोड़ रुपए पासिंग के नहीं देगा 25 किलोमीटर के नीचे अगर आप चलाते हैं उस पर आपको कोई कंप्लाइंस की जरूरत नहीं है तो वो इंडस्ट्री आपके लिए बहुत ओपन है अगर आप दिल्ली के अंदर है तो आपने बास बाइक सुना होगा आई दिल्ली का स्टार्टअप है उन्होंने पच्चीस डिलीवरी के लिए पच्चीस किलोमीटर पर आवर के नीचे की बाइक्स बनाई हैं जो कि डिलीवरी में यूज होती है यूलू टाइप की तो वो इंडस्ट्री बहुत ही अच्छी जिसमें आप बहुत ही अच्छा बना सकते हैं और उसकी जो मोटर आर्किटेक्चर बहुत ही सिंपल है तो वो इंडस्ट्री बहुत ही अच्छी है ठीक है सर ठीक है हाँ सर मेरा क्वेश्चन अभी बाकी है हाँ अब्दुल्ला सॉरी आपका क्वेश्चन बाकी है मैं आपका क्वेश्चन थोड़ा रिपीट करेंगे आप हाँ, वही जो रेट्रोफिटिंग है अब ये बहुत इंडस्ट्री चैलेंजिंग हो चुकी है टू व्हीलर भी थ्री व्हीलर रेट्रोफिटिंग भी आप खोल लेंगे बट आई टोल्ड यू जितना मैंने आपको अभी तक बताया ये जब मैंने शुरू किया था मुझे नहीं पता था मुझे तो कुछ नहीं पता था कि कम्प्लाइंसेज क्या होते हैं आर्किटेक्चर के तो कर करके सीखा और अभी भी सीख ही रहे हैं मैं इसलिए कहा कि मैं दस परसेंट ही शायद ईवी के बारे में समझता हूँ और जानता हूँ बहुत बड़ा सब्जेक्ट है और जब आप देखिए कॉलेज प्रोजेक्ट इज समथिंग विच यू कैन मेक वेन यू कम एट द कस्टमर आपको गालियां भी खानी पड़ती हैं so mm-hmm. it's a better to work with the companies like diguru is a very big, good platform from where you can have placements and all from there you right. can you can connect with the industry and make yourself you know uh, a harshad mat of that industry <laughs> okay thank you thank you thank you uh, i have a, a small question if uh, if if i can sure sure definitely So first of all thank you Jawad thank you Lavisha and uh, everyone at uh, DIY Guru and I'm already an, a student with you so my question is about the crane the F150 crane you have you have been like uh, retrofitting so I know that the 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 like the compression the the, the compressor needs mm-hmm. like the motor the uh, the diesel motor to be all all, uh, all the time on to to feed it like to yes. to feed the hydraulics and stuff so how did you tackle this like how how did you deal with this do you like uh, pu- uh like uh, plug in the the crane all the time to electricity or do you, do you have like uh, something to deal with this sure thank you thank you david for the beautiful question Thanks. so basically what we do is that you know when i said that one motor is running you know giving a traction to the a uh, whole whole vehicle like it is moving the vehicle and it is also working lifting the boom also the compressor hydraulics basically there so uh, there is one uh, reducer there when you plug that reducer it get disconnected from the tires like with the power train and it gives power to the boom and yes the motor has to run continuously but there one challenge which came with us is that to run the motor at the exact rpm because when you uh, lift the load you need the uh, you know uh, higher rpm it's same with the uh, engine also so for that we had to uh, integrate uh, one electronic device there which uh, sense the load and as per that it increase the rpm of the motor and which helps in lifting the uh, weight thank you very much thank you thank you uh there is uh, i can see four question from rafiq uh, that is retrofitting being neglected by government yes definitely it is neglected because you know it is something uh, industry which i can say uh, very good industry but currently it is neglected but people you now government are uh, thinking on this because look rafiq nobody has done till now has shown the result to the government and everybody is saying sir reduce the tax reduce this reduce this aise nahi hota jab tak aap results nahi dikhayenge tab tak kaam nahi hoga and why there is no subsidy for the retrofitting because nobody has ever done shown the result jab tak result nahi dikhaoge to papa ko bol do ki you know bachpan mein kehte the na ki main mujhe cycle chahiye to what they said ki first aa jao 10th mein 
तो यहाँ पे भी सेम है जब आप रिजल्ट नहीं दिखाओगे कि इसका इम्पैक्ट कितना है तो सब्सिडी कहाँ से होगी बट नाउ द गुड पार्ट इज वी हैड अ मीटिंग विद दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग सब्सिडी ऑन द रेट्रोफिटमेंट इवन हैदराबाद इज ऑल्सो प्रोवाइडिंग तेलंगाना पीपल गवर्नमेंट इज कमिंग विद दिस स्कीम वाई डज एंड गवर्नमेंट स्टैंडराइज रेट्रोफिट फॉर ऑल द अवेलेबल मॉडल दिस इज रियली दिस क्वेश्चन यू नो इवन वी हैड पुट इट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑल्सो बट यू नो मुझे लगता है कि करने से ही होगा और जितना हम करेंगे वैसे ही रिजल्ट दिखेंगे क्योंकि अभी मैं बात करते हैं अगर कोई मतलब मैं क्या बात करूं कोई भी ऐसा प्लेयर रेट्रोफिटिंग प्लेयर जो है अगर अपना प्रोपोजल गवर्नमेंट के आगे रखता है कि आप स्टैंडराइज कर दो रेट्रोफिट्स को सारे मॉडल्स या फीस कम लो तो यू you नो know, अभी कोई मतलब नहीं बनता क्योंकि जब तक हम रिजल्ट्स नहीं दिखाएं जब तक हम एक प्रूवन ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड नहीं दिखाएं तभी गवर्नमेंट में सीरियसली लेगी इज रेट्रो फिटिंग प्रॉफिटेबल बिजनेस डेफिनेटली इज अ प्रॉफिटेबल बिजनेस बट इट इज द बिजनेस इन विच यू बिकम द डिफॉल्ट ओ सो ये बिजनेस बिल्कुल प्रॉफिटेबल है हाँ उतना ज्यादा नहीं है कि जितना आप सोच रहे हो एक नए ओ को मिलता है लेकिन आप उतना ज्यादा बना सकते हैं उसका रीजन है टू स्टैंडराइज द थिंग्स टू Uh, work on your whole system to make it profitable because चीजें profitable बनती है बनाने से और uh, yes आप उतना ज्यादा उसके अंदर मतलब आप volume of scale के ऊपर इसके ऊपर खेल सकते हैं एक दो गाड़ियों के ऊपर there is no sense any other body I hope I give question answer to the every question yeah. and sir. I think राहुल जी बड़ा सिंपल क्वेश्चन आपसे पूछूंगा आपके पास स्प्लेंडर आप स्प्लेंडर लेते कितने आई थिंक एक लाख पचहत्तर हजार की आती है अस्सी हजार की आती है ना एट्टी थाउजेंड 80,000 ना और राहुल जी उसके अंदर मैं आपको कहता हूं कि आप इसके अंदर रेट्रोफिटेड किट लगा दीजिए नब्बे हजार की डजेंट मेक सेंस यस राइट तो बात ही खत्म रिलायबिलिटी तो बात बात तब पहुंचती है जब मैं उसको पहले इकोनॉमिकली तो जस्टिफाई करूं mm-hmm. मैं पचास हजार की चाइनीज स्कूटी खरीद लू मैं नब्बे हजार में एथर ले लू ओला ले लूंग बेटर ऑफ इन द मार्केट वाई गो विदिटमेंट आई टोल्ड यू इन द स्टार्टिंग यू हैव टू चूज द मार्केट वेरी वाइजली मैं किस सेगमेंट के ऊपर काम कर रहा हूँ मान लीजिए अगर मैं ट्रक को इलेक्ट्रिक करता हूँ एक लाइक वी हैड अपॉर्चुनिटी फ्रॉम बिरला ग्रुप जहाँ पे उनके दिन का 25 लाख रुपए का डीजल चलता है और अगर वो अपने उन ट्रक्स को इलेक्ट्रिक करते हैं अपना कैपिटल लगाते हैं तो उनके हर दिन का जो बजट है डीजल की वो है आपकी कुछ नहीं कुछ नहीं इलेक्ट्रिसिटी काट के सारा मेंटेनेंस काट के आपके बाईस लाख रुपए हर दिन के बच रहे हैं इवन उससे भी ज्यादा तो उस मार्केट को टारगेट करें जहां पर प्रॉब्लम वाकई है आप yes. स्प्लेंडर आप स्प्लेंडर जो चला रहे हैं वो नब्बे हजार रुपए आपको स्प्लेंडर इलेक्ट्रिक करने के देगा तो चूज योर मार्केट एंड कस्टमर वेरी वाइजली मनीष जी आपने हाथ रेज किया मनीष साहू आई थिंक लवीशा जी दे इज नो अदर पर्सन फॉर Uh, sir, I just texted you something. Uh, let me just. Can you please pardon the question? Uh, can you please come back? Uh, motivation that you make to make a better major. How you to apply you to make it just to branding where people feel it. Yes, definitely, Vishnu. Uh, you know, uh, it is definitely like motivation that you make to vehicles, but a major one. How do you plan to? look you know branding uh, you know trustworthy it always become with your work and with your choice of the components and brand is not built in a one day and if yes, I, if i if i talk about that uh, we went to you know that place there we find the bearing you know the the experience we are sharing and we spend our almost yes. 30 40000 rupees you know on a single person so that is how you make your brand how you make your people trustworthy because you know that is our fault we have not taken care of these thing in the starting in the table so component is first of all the standard of quality of the material the quality of the component and the quality of the approach even the process you have to define in the starting 
and then when your you know work is in the market then your action speaks and then your brand becomes some kind of you know trustworthy and people start mm -hmm. you know if if I'm, if tadpole is getting repeated order every month i think we are on yeah. that way yeah thank you so thank you for the session thank you vishnu uh all right i think all the questions are uh, clear if you have any question feel free to approach me uh, i guess um, it's been quite a late time for mr zawad also yeah so, i on my back yeah. is hurting now <laughs> yes even our team is working till now so i guess uh, we should wrap up the session as of now and we're definitely planning this once again Sure, and it sure. was a lovely session uh, like students are not ready to leave it it's getting <laughs> too you. interesting thank you thank you so much i hope i just give you my you know whatever the best i can and... yeah i shared the linkedin ids of you of me sure, and sure, of sure. the iwaguru they can directly connect to us sure, you can sure. connect with me as lavisha basuntani and by jawad khan to him and you can directly inbox us sure you can you can send the ppt uh lavisha you are uh, shubham ji is having i have shared him the ppt i will share him the revised version and if anybody uh, need you can send accordingly please contact uh, the tiger team for the ppt it is you know sure, sure jawad sure jawad thank you thank, thank you, you for your time you. jawad i think this this was one of the most interactive session we have ever had <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> i hope everyone liked it thank you so guys uh, 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 for update uh, we are on next sunday we are organizing one more session like this i'll share the update uh, uh, for the topics and all uh, uh, thank you guys uh, and we are we are start soon starting a batch uh, for placement oriented course specialization course uh, if anyone required for such kind of training uh, do let us know all the information contact related details already been shared in the chat box you guys can feel free to reach us thank you jawad thank you everyone thank you, for thank you everyone session. good night thank you lavisha thank you for your time good night everyone thank you thank good you night. Night. have a good, good, good night everyone bye. take care bye bye good night good night all right good night bye. thank you thank you bye